Africa's natural resources are being exploited every day by the Western world, yet the continent is not half as developed as they are. If the continent puts a ban on this exploitation, can it lead to the collapse of all Western countries including all of America, Europe, and Canada? If you doubt your answer, watch this video for clarification. Back in 2008, French President Jacques Chirac acknowledged that without Africa, France would lose its standing as a major power and face significant challenges. This sentiment applies to the rest of Europe as well. However, South African President Cyril Ramaphosa recently declared at the United Nations General Assembly that African wealth should no longer be seen as the sole property of the West. This statement represents a shift in thinking, as African countries are now united in their determination to ensure that their resources benefit their own people rather than solely benefiting the Western world. President Ramaphosa emphasized that African communities are no longer willing to bear the burden of industrialization and development for prosperous nations in the Northern Hemisphere. It is time for Africa to assert its ownership over its rich mineral resources, which should ultimately serve the interests of the African people. This signifies a change in the dynamics between the Southern Hemisphere, where Africa is located, and the Northern Hemisphere, where many developed nations reside. According to the recent speech by the South African President at the United Nations General Assembly, it was firmly stated that African resources rightfully belong to Africans. The President emphasized that only Africans who are born and raised on the continent have the legitimate right to consider African resources as part of their wealth. This assertion is audacious due to the historical context of Western countries colonizing Africa and exploiting its resources for extended periods. Despite achieving independence, some Western nations still perceive African resources as their own, ignoring the rightful ownership by Africans. The South African president consistently raises this issue in various forums, including the French Financial Summit and Bryce discussions. His unwavering message is that African resources solely belong to Africans and should be seen as their exclusive property. He argues that despite the end of colonial exploitation, Africa continues to bear the costs associated with industrialization and development for wealthier nations. Mineral resources beneath African soil are often deemed valuable assets in many northern countries. With confidence, the South African president asserts that Africa's wealth unequivocally belongs to Africans, and the mineral riches beneath the continent's surface must ultimately benefit Africans. This bold stance reflects the growing courage of African leaders who are no longer willing to shoulder the burdens of historical resource exploitation. They are advocating for the rights of African people to these resources and seeking to address past imbalances. The speech signifies a rising sense of empowerment among African leaders and a collective call for fair resource management and equitable wealth distribution. African leaders are now fearlessly addressing historical injustices and asserting their rightful claims to resources that have long been seen as belonging to the global community. This marks a significant departure from the past, when speaking out against such injustices carried risks of reprisals from powerful Western nations. Africans are increasingly aware of their prolonged marginalization and are contemplating the potential consequences of standing up for their rights, including unfair business deals, sanctions, and travel advisories. This shift in discourse reflects Africa's pursuit of a more balanced and just global order. The continent is rich in resources, including substantial gold reserves, accounting for 40% of the world's gold production. African countries such as Ghana, South Africa, Mali, Tanzania, the Democratic Republic of Congo, and Nigeria hold significant gold deposits, with the potential for more discoveries, including in Kenya. Africa is also home to abundant diamond reserves, with the largest deposits found exclusively on the continent. Countries such as Angola, South Africa, Botswana, Zimbabwe, the DRC, Tanzania, Sierra Leone, and others have significant diamond resources. Natural resources are plentiful across the African continent, raising the question of why the majority of the wealth derived from these resources does not remain in the countries of origin, but instead flows to destinations like Dubai, the UK, or the US. Countries in Africa, including Libya, Algeria, Nigeria, Angola, South Sudan, and Egypt, possess strategic oil reserves, but the wealth generated from these reserves often leaves the producing nations. In simple terms, African leaders are now bravely advocating for fair resource ownership and wealth distribution. 
recognizing the abundant resources within their borders and seeking to benefit their own nations from these valuable assets. Multinational corporations often negotiate unfavorable terms and conditions that hinder African nations from benefiting fully from their resources. An example is President Obama's oil drilling deal with President Kenyatta of Kenya, which raised concerns about the lengthy commitment before Kenyans could gain control and why the wealth generated wouldn't stay in the country. Insufficient laws compel corporations to reinvest their profits locally, resulting in funds being sent overseas instead of benefiting resource-rich nations. Ivory Coast in Ghana, major cocoa bean producers, face a similar challenge as most profits from the chocolate industry go to European countries like Switzerland, despite Africa's significant contribution. This situation stems from a history of foreign entities dictating how African nations manage their resources, rooted in Africa's colonial past. African leaders now seek to transform this dynamic, assert control over resources, and create a more balanced global order. The South African president exemplifies this by asserting that Africa's wealth belongs to Africans and must benefit their people. The president's message challenges Western claims to African resources, echoing the sentiments of many Africans who question why their resource-rich continent remains impoverished. He has consistently advocated for this cause, including at the United Nations General Assembly and the Russia-Africa Summit, where he confronted the West for treating Africa as an extension of their territories. President Ramaphosa emphasized that African nations are sovereign and should determine their partners and engagement conditions independently. He stressed the need for respectful and mutually beneficial relationships with other nations, moving away from measuring wealth solely based on mineral resources, which parallels the dehumanizing practice of quantifying slaves in the past. Overall, African leaders aim to assert their rights, reshape resource management and wealth distribution, and break free from exploitative relationships with the West or any other external powers. African countries now want to engage with countries that treat them with respect and offer mutual benefits. Russia has emerged as a prominent player seeking closer ties with Africa. Unlike the perceived actions of the West, Russia positions itself as an equal partner and collaborator, promising to respect African nations and provide support. President Putin has actively extended assistance and participated in projects for Africa's development, enhancing Russia's standing on the continent. Last year's Russian-African summit, attended by 43 heads of state, marked a significant milestone. President Ramaphosa advocated for Africa to have a unified voice, comparable to a G21, and stressed the underrepresentation of Africa on the United Nations Security Council. He argued that Africa should be involved in decision-making processes that directly impact the continent. President Ramaphosa believes Africa should hold a seat at tables where consequential decisions are made, as the continent's exclusion is unfair and unacceptable due to its significant population and the interconnected nature of the world. He emphasized the importance of negotiation, dialogue, and adherence to the United Nations Charter for Peaceful Conflict Resolutions. South Africa hopes that through constructive engagement and negotiations, ongoing conflicts like the one between Russia and Ukraine can be effectively resolved. President Ramaphosa addressed the issue of Western countries' engagement with Africa, highlighting that their assistance often perpetuates cycles of poverty despite their public commitment to aid and support. Overall, African countries seek partnerships with nations that respect their sovereignty, offer genuine support, and contribute to their development without perpetuating dependency. Western countries are accused of looting African resources and using minimal aid as a way to maintain control and dependency. President Ramaphosa bravely exposed this reality, highlighting how Africa's natural resources have been treated as extensions of Western territories, allowing Western leaders to exert influence and intervene in African affairs. He emphasized that African nations have the right to their resources and the freedom to choose their business partners. Multinational corporations operating in Africa often extract resources, repatriate profits, harm the environment, and provide inadequate compensation to host nations. President Ramaphosa calls for respecting African sovereignty and their authority over their resources. He argues against calculating Europe's wealth based on minerals from African soil, comparing it to the historical practice of measuring wealth by the number of slaves taken from the continent. A new approach to Africa's engagement with other nations should prioritize mutual respect and mutual benefit. 
it is important to dispel the misconception that Africa is inherently poor, as Europe has historically exploited African resources and kept the continent impoverished. In fact, reports indicate that Sub-Saharan Africa is a net creditor to the rest of the world, with over $41 billion in surplus. While there is an inflow of money, approximately $161 billion per year, in the form of loans, remittances, and aid, there is also a significant outflow of $203 billion from the continent. A substantial portion of this outflow, around $68 billion, is attributed to tax evasion. Large multinational corporations operating in Africa often exploit legal loopholes, disguising their profits as if they were generated in tax havens. These illicit financial flows amount to approximately 6.1% of Africa's entire gross domestic product, three times the amount received in aid. Moreover, these corporations send an additional $30 billion back to their home countries, even though the money was earned in Africa. Profits extracted from Africa's resources and labor are abundant in cities like London. Africa's wealth is also indirectly drained through illegal activities such as logging, fishing, and wildlife trade, resulting in an annual loss of approximately $29 billion. Additionally, Africa is burdened with an estimated $36 billion owed due to the anticipated damage from climate change, which restricts their development as they are discouraged from using fossil fuels despite not being responsible for the global climate crisis. It is important to note that not all the wealth flowing into Africa genuinely benefits its people. Loans to governments and the private sector, totaling over $50 billion, often lead to insurmountable and morally reprehensible debts. For instance, Ghana loses 30% of its government revenue to debt repayments, and loans for projects like an aluminum smelter in Mozambique end up costing the country significantly more than the aid received. Even British aid, which is intended to establish private educational institutions and healthcare centers, can hinder the development of robust public services. This has led to the closure of private schools in Uganda and Kenya. While a small number of Africans have benefited from this economic system, there are around 165,000 very wealthy Africans with a combined wealth of $860 billion. However, where do they primarily keep their wealth? The answer is tax havens. In 2014, it was estimated that wealthy Africans had secretly stashed an astonishing $500 billion in offshore tax havens. This wealth drainage negatively affects the African population as it stems from an economic system that allows a select few Africans to accumulate riches while continuously draining wealth from the continent. The key point is that even the wealth generated by rich Africans flows out of Africa, benefiting the Western financial system. Despite having valuable resources, Africa remains impoverished because these resources are taken to Western countries, offering only meager returns to African nations. The vast reserves of mineral resources hidden beneath the African continent contribute to this issue. In 2019, Africa extracted nearly 1 billion tons of minerals worth a staggering $406 billion. According to the United Nations, Africa holds about 30% of the world's mineral reserves, 12% of its oil reserves, and 8% of its natural gas reserves. Additionally, the continent possesses a significant portion, approximately 40%, of the world's gold reserves, as well as a substantial share of vital resources like chromium and platinum, accounting for up to 90% of global reserves. In today's world, our electronic devices rely on a diverse range of minerals, ranging from aluminum to zinc. In 2021, an astonishing 1.5 billion smartphones were sold worldwide, a significant increase from the 122 million units sold in 2007. Interestingly, more than half of a typical mobile phone's components, such as its electronics, display, battery, and speakers, are made from minerals obtained through mining and initial processing. Important metals like lithium and cobalt, crucial for battery production, are mainly sourced from the Democratic Republic of the Congo, which contributes to about 63% of global cobalt production. Across Africa's 54 diverse countries, petroleum and coal are the most abundant minerals in 22 of these nations. In 2019, Nigeria was the largest petroleum producer on the continent, accounting for a substantial 25% of total production, followed by Angola at 17% and Algeria at 16%. Additionally, metals like gold, iron, titanium, zinc, 
and copper are the primary minerals in 11 African countries. Ghana is the leading gold producer in Africa, closely followed by South Africa and Mali. For 13 African countries, industrial minerals such as diamonds, gypsum, salt, sulfur, and phosphates are their primary commodities. Notably, the Democratic Republic of the Congo is Africa's top producer of industrial diamonds, with Botswana and South Africa also significant contributors. Botswana stands out in Africa for producing high-quality gem diamonds often used in jewelry. It is crucial for African countries to reclaim control over their resources. The South African president has shown a willingness to pursue this goal, and it is important for the West to be prepared. The question remains whether the West will attempt to blackmail African countries into exporting their precious natural resources or if this time will be different, with African countries taking back control. To avoid being blackmailed, African countries should consider implementing strategies to protect their resources and assert their sovereignty. It is important to have strong policies in place to ensure fair and transparent resource extraction, negotiate beneficial trade agreements, and prioritize the interests and development of their own people. If you're interested in watching more videos on black culture, civilization, history, and evidence of the achievements of black people, consider subscribing to our channel and clicking the bell icon for notifications. We aim to bring you content that sheds light on these important topics. Thank you for watching and stay tuned for our next video.